started the new life in Christ Jesus Church. Hallelujah. We also want to welcome those who is watching this broadcast online. And we want to say thank you for being with us this evening. And we pray that this service tonight will be a blessing to each of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's we open up in prayer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Father, for today is the day that you have made. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing in this place. We thank you, Father, for everyone who came tonight. And we thank you, Father, for those who is watching this broadcast. We thank you, Father, that your presence and your anointing continue to manifest in your people's lives, that you touch your people tonight in the name of Jesus. And Father, we're giving you all the praise and we're giving you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We're giving you a praise. We're giving you a glory. You are mighty God. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the restoration. Hallelujah. Restoration in the people's lives. We thank you, Lord. Restore your people's minds. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Those who went through some hard times, whatever you went through, I proclaim and declare in the name of Jesus restoration in your emotions, restoration in your mind. That every confusion, every spirit of confusion, I bind, I loose it, I break it off right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that your people have a mind of Christ. Say this with me. I have a mind of Christ. I have ability of God. I receive this mind of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And when the enemy come against you, whatever thoughts or whatever guilt he tried to bring forth, you just speak this. And you said, I have a mind of Christ. I've been redeemed. My mind is the mind of Christ. It's been washed through the blood of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Pastor Larry, come. He's going to be teaching tonight. Usually on Sunday night, he teaching on healing. See, Jesus Christ, he is our Savior. He is our deliverer. He is our redeemer. But he is also our healer. Hallelujah. If you have some challenges in your body, know that God wants to heal you. Amen. Because it belongs to you. The healing belongs to each of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. He is faithful. He is faithful. Amen. God is good. He is faithful. He is a faithful God. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So also I want to remind you that we do have um, our website LarryBergensMinistries.com And if you have some prayer requests or maybe you want to share some testimony with us, please do so. Because we love these testimonies. When God did something in your life, when we pray and God manifests supernaturally in your life. Because see, the scripture says that we overcome the Satan, how? By the blood of the Lamb, right? And by the word of our testimony. 
So when we share the testimony, we give praises to the Lord, what He has done. Amen. Amen. So it's a wonderful thing. So we appreciate if you continue to do so. We love to read your testimony. Now, if you have some prayer requests, you also go ahead and um, send us a message, and we are um, gonna pray for you and for your needs because we lift we lift all of our prayer requests and we pray daily for all of our partners. All of our supporters, those who is the part of this ministry, we continually pray for you. And we also want to say thank you for you continue to pray for us. We also want to appreciate everyone who is also sow the seed for the um, trip to the Pakistan. God's name has been glorified. God did an awesome work in Pakistan, touched so many people, so many, over 40, I think it was the numbers, 49,000 people face-to-face -face encounter was saved, and over 50 or... 49, 49, 59 or something. So over 70,000 people healed. Uh, got healed, so... Over around 50,000 people was God saved, and over 70,000 people was God healed. So we give glory to God. God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. And He wants to touch His people, right? And He was a part of that because when you sow the seed, you're not able to go, but He was able to send Pastor Larry to go, and He was uh, being used by God. On the, on the lives on behalf of the people. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Larry is here. He's going to be ministering to us. So just get ready to receive the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. you, we praise you, we honor you, Lord. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love you, to those that are called according to your purpose. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I bless your people. All those under the sound of my voice, I bless right now and I release the anointing upon them. Jesus' name. Amen. Let's play that song. Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, all fear is gone. <clears throat> because he lived, I can face Because he lived, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth.
Amen. His name was Jesus. He came to die. Heal and restore. But greater still, He come assure Now I can face uncertain days because He He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lived. And then one day I'll cross that river, I'll find life's fine. No war with pain, and then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, then I'll know He lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know, I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Because my Savior lives, I can face tomorrow. Because Jesus lives. All the fear is gone. Because I know, I know, I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because He lives. I know, I know, I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives Jesus, thank you, Lord Amen Because He lives because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, hallelujah. I just wanted to sing that song. Amen. Because our God is a consuming fire. Amen. And he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Glory to his name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, I'm going to be singing, not, not, excuse me, I'm not going to be singing on one night, 
But right now I'm going to be giving you the word. God wants you to understand the principles of receiving the promise of God in your life. And so I titled this message, Building Up Your Faith to Receive Your Healing. Or you might say, building up your faith on the word of God that you may receive your healing. Many people are walking around, they listen to the word all the time, but and they're still walking around sick. They have not understood how to appropriate the word of God, how to activate the word of God concerning their conditions. And God's word has not changed since he gave the command. His word is still the same. He has not altered his word. Since he spoke and said, let there be light, the word has always been the same. Amen. But I want you to know something very important about you receiving your healing. And that is you're going to have to have faith. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, verse number one said, so now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. You can't see faith. But you know, when you when you get in faith, things begin to happen for you. I mean, it begin to pop. <laughs> Amen. Just like that. Things begin to happen. Why? Because you have stepped into the realm of the spirit where things happen. Amen. So how are you going to get faith? The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter uh, 11, verse number 22, I think. And Jesus answered and said to them, talking to his disciples, he told them to have faith in God. Amen. He told them to have faith in God. Amen. So if he told them to have faith in God, then he's telling us also to have faith in God. Amen. And then he tells us how faith comes. Romans 10, 17. So then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I'm going to have faith, amen, then I, I have to understand where it comes from. So now, Romans 10, 17 become to be a reality in my heart. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So now I want to know something else now because if, 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 if faith is what I need to receive my healing, then doubt cannot have place in my heart at any place, at any, at any time. Why? Because doubt and faith uh, reside in the same place in the heart of man. And only one can occupy that space at, at, at any given time. Doubt or faith. Which one is going to occupy that space is going to determine, is going, is going to depend on you. Amen. How you hearing and receiving the word of God. Amen. So now the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 11 verse number 23. For verily, verily I say unto you, he that, oh glory to God. He said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, there we go, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. See, doubt and faith or belief cannot dwell in the same place. You're either going to doubt God or you're going to believe God. Amen. So whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Now get this. And shall not doubt in his heart, but believe, but believe. That word believe means have faith. Believing, that means you, you, you have faith in God. But believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, then you shall have whatsoever you say. Amen. And then it goes on to verse number 24. Mark chapter 11, verse number 24 said, Therefore I say unto you, what things well will you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them. Amen. So if you believe you receive them, he just said, he, he, there's no place for doubt in there at all. No place for doubt at all. So therefore I say to you, what things will you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you shall what? You shall have them. That's right. You shall have them. Amen. So God is calling us to establish a biblical uh, a, a scripture based in our heart concerning healing because when we do that then we can begin to meditate upon what we have uh, been placing in our heart 
that we're going to begin to experience or we're going to begin to, uh, uh, oh my God, we're going to begin to grow in faith. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter, oh my God, chapter, let me just look at that for a minute. Chapter 17, I think. Glory to God. Oh my God. <sighs> okay, you look like I need to come back there real quick, honey. So come out of there. Okay, uh, you come up here and, 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 and minister on healing while I go back here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We know that Jesus Christ is the healer. He is a deliverer. Amen. Hallelujah. And, uh, and uh, let's look and uh, look look 13 in the verse 11 and 16. So behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bound together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and says unto her, Woman, they are loose from the, from the infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Hallelujah. See, that scripture is showing us when person get free from the infirmity, and when God deliver the individual from the infirmity, what it says here, and glorify God. So when we receive our healing, or oh, oh God set us free from the infirmity, the glory, the that freedom bring the glory to the name of our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a that's a good news. That is a gospel. That is a good news. Amen. Amen. I remember that the pastor and I years ago we was ministering in some um, service, and um, a lot of times the when person is bound by the infirmity or some sickness is being bound by the evil spirit. And when the evil spirit is being cast out for the laying on the hands or by just uh, speaking to that spirit, that spirit is live and person becomes free. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So so just just expect expect that this is what God wants to do for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now so let's look at the scripture book of Acts. Jesus himself says, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sends me. And we see that also what in the book of John 6, 38. Uh, Therefore, since Jesus went about healing everybody, healing must be what? The will of God. Because Jesus, he went about to heal everybody. Amen? So, when when you see someone get healed, it's mean that you could be next. It's mean what God did for that person, you 
can have the same as the as you receive, as you expect. Hallelujah. Amen. So Pastor Larry a lot of times shares so many testimonies how God brought manifestation of healing. I remember some even in my personal life. I came one time from um, where I was traveled. I was traveled to uh, Israel. And I came from Israel uh, from so much walking <laughs> up and down and in a uh, holy land. I don't know what happened, but something was happening to my knee. And when I came to the service, I didn't even have a chance to talk to him. I was just um, very faithful and committed to what I have to do to support the ministry, to be always um, in the services. And so when I came to the service, even though sometimes, you know, you, I have that experience of pain. But you know what? When I came to the service, and he was praying for the seed. I came out and I was just, I just, you know, he don't even ask me what is it I'm praying, you know, need a prayer for. But I know one thing. He prayed, he released the power of God, he released the prayer. And then I didn't, honestly, I don't even feel anything at that moment. But what happened is later, I realized when I was walking out of the church at uh, that evening service, I realized that I had no pain. The pain was gone. And I know Jesus is the healer. He touched my body. He touched my knee. And I can go on and on talking about how many manifestations of healing God is see personal in my body. And some of you may have a testimony also what God did for you before. But now if you struggle with some situation as God manifests his healing in your body before he can do this again because our God, he is the healer. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Larry is back. He's going to continue to minister to you on healing. So just get ready to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. I did not forget my timer. But it's okay. <clears throat> Amen. So I believe that God is going to do something in your life that's going to cause you to experience his wonderful work. Amen. God is good, folks, and his mercies endureth forever. His mercies endureth forever. And so let's hold fast to the profession of our faith. Remember we said in Mark chapter 11, verse number 23, Verily I say unto you, uh, he says, uh, Say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Amen. God wants to do something so powerful in your life that will cause your, your understanding to become so real when it comes to walking in divine health and healing. Amen. You ever thought, you ever thought that, you ever realized that uh, how much God loved you? He loved you so much that he, that he desired to, to, to work with you and to help you to, to receive his best. Amen. And believe me, you want his best. You want his best. I want his best. His best is better than anything that we can muster up. When we are believing God, when we are believing God and asking God for his will to be carried out in our life, we must have a biblical foundation established in our heart so that we can come to him in faith. Amen. That we can come to him in faith. Remember, building up your faith on the word of God so that you can receive the promise of God or your healing. Amen. That's what we're talking about today. 
That's what we're talking about today. Now, I want to take you to a few scriptures. Hey, Amen. I talked about your faith now. Let's, let's, just, let's just look at let's just look here and see what, what your faith will do for you. Amen. Now, notice in the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, Amen. Now let's look, see here. And let's just start verse number one. And when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. Amen. And the, his leprosy was cleansed. Now notice this man, he could have he could have stayed away, but he saw an opportunity so that where he might be able to obtain the blessings of God on his life. And so as he came to Jesus, he came realizing that he needed something and that something he needed was coming from God. Amen. It was not something that he already had. It was something that he needed and it was coming from God. Amen. So when we when he came there, when he came there, he began to experience, he began to experience the love of the Father. He didn't get rejected. He didn't say, no, you are, you've been, you, you are, you, you have leprosy. I don't want nothing to do with you. No, Jesus looked upon this man and he answered the man's request. Notice what he said once again. Notice what he said once again. Right here in verse number two, he said, and behold, there came a leper worshiping him. How did the leper come? He came worshiping. In other words, he came with a humble spirit. He didn't come trying to force his way. He didn't come trying to demand something to happen. But he came with a, a heart believing God for something that only God could give him. Amen. Because otherwise, uh, leprosy is a death sentence. Amen. But he came believing God. He didn't come doubting God because if he, if he had been doubting, he probably never would have came. But notice what he said, notice what he said right here. The leper came to God. Notice what he said right here. Verse number two, Matthew chapter eight, verse number two. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. This leper, he had no idea was it God with him to be healed because of probably his lifestyle that he probably lived and attracted this leprosy. So he didn't know whether it was God will or not because, and therefore he asked, Lord, if it's thy will, if it's thy will, thou can make clean. Even though he said, if it's thy will, there's no doubt in what he's saying. He, he's not saying, he's not, he, he's not talking with a doubtful heart, a doubtful spirit. Amen. He's actually still asking in faith. Amen. Because he's, he's just basically asking the question. Lord, if it be thy will, thou can make me clean. Amen. There's no doubt in that in that statement. And I like that because it, it, it exposes, it exposes the, the, the heart of this man toward the Lord. Remember how he came? He came worshiping. He came worshiping. Amen. He didn't come, and, and he what he when, when he come worshiping, I believe the man just just, just humble himself and bow down before the before the Lord. And, he, and I, I bet you, I, I just believe the man wouldn't even look up at his face. He held he 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 was so he was hum, so humble that he would not even look up at his face. He just bowed his head down and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Amen. I this this is because this is the this is the honorable way of approaching someone in, in, in the spirit of humility, not staring them eye to eye, but with a humble heart. Face down, face pointing down. Amen. So this man, he came expecting to receive. And guess what happened, folks? Guess what happened? Notice what it said right here. Notice what it said in verse number two, verse number three. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. In other words, I am willing. Amen. I am willing for you to be clean. So I am willing. Be thou clean. Amen. Be thou clean. And the Bible said his leprosy, immediately his leprosy was cleansed was cleansed. Amen. And I like that because now we're going, we're going down to verse number four and, and we're going to read just a few more verses here. We're going to see how faith 
is so important for you to receive from God. Amen. Notice what he said right in verse number four. And Jesus said, uh, Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go, go thy way and show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, here it is right here, folks. When Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant, now notice this centurion talking to Jesus, not on his own behalf, but on behalf of his servant. And I, this is powerful. This is very powerful. Amen. Verse number five, Matthew 8, verse five. And when Jesus was come, when Jesus entered to Capernaum, there came to him, there came to him a centurion beseeching him and said, Lord, my servant lied at home sick of palsy and grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Now listen at this centurion. He said, I will come and heal him. But no, the centurion, he did not come to invite him into his house. Because this centurion, he understood that this man that he was talking to, Jesus, was a man of authority. And that he was uh, highly respected amongst his peers. Amen. Amen. So now, even though even though uh, uh, there was a lot of people disagreed with Jesus, but yet there was a lot of people agreed with Jesus. Amen. And so notice now notice what he says right here. But Jesus said in verse number, Jesus said in verse number seven, that, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And I like what the centurion said in verse number eight. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that I should come under my roof. Amen. I'm not worthy that I should come under my roof. Glory to God. But speak the word only. Now see that? Now that's, that's faith right there. Speak the word only. Well, if he had faith just in the word that would be spoken, now don't tell me that this man, a centurion, not a Jew, but a centurion, had more faith than the ones that were following Jesus. Because when Jesus heard that statement, he looked at them that was following him, which was the Jews, and he said, I have not found so great faith, no, not in all Israel. Amen. He saw the faith of this man's heart established toward God, and this man knows what he said. I'm not worthy that I should come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, I don't know if this man has a, had a, a biblical foundation of how to receive from, from, from God, but I believe this man had heard so much about the Lord Jesus Christ that his faith had came to a level that he knew that if he would, if he would only ask with, with, doubt, with, doubt, with, with no doubt in his heart, if he would only act without doubting in his heart, that his request would be granted. Because this man, he didn't come boastful, he didn't come proudful, he came humble, he came before the Lord and asked the Lord, and, and the Lord said, I will come to your, I will come with you and I will, I will come to your house and heal it. And, and the centurion said, oh no, Lord, I'm not worthy you come out of the room. I'm, you just don't understand who, who I am. I'm not worthy you coming to my room. I don't want you to be defiled, so I'm not gonna ask you, I'm not gonna let you do that. I don't want you to be defiled. I'd rather that you because I understand that you're a man of authority and I have service under me and I say to this sir, this soldier go and he goeth. I say to this soldier do this and he doeth it and I say to this one come and he cometh. Amen. See, he began to explain to Jesus about a servant. He understood servant and he knew that Jesus' words will release the faith which was the servant of Jesus. You know, faith was the servant of Jesus. Amen. And when he spoke it, it came to pass. Why? Because his, his, his faith went to work at that moment. And I like that because it tells us right here, it says in, in verse number nine, I am a man under authority having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he go and, and to another, come and he cometh. And I say to my servant, do this and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, verily, I say unto you, I have found, 
I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Verse number 10. Amen. Verse number 11 says, And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the churches of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. Now get this right here. As thou hath believed. Go thy way as thou hath believed. Because he said, I believe you just speak the word. My servant be healed. He said, go thy way as thou hath believed. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. My friend, that is so powerful. That is so powerful. Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that selfsame hour. Having a foundation, believing God without doubt in your heart, is so important if you're going to receive the manifestation of the word that God has spoken concerning your health. God wants to heal you. God doesn't get any pleasure out of seeing you walking around hurting, walk around full of pain, or lying in your bed crying like a baby because you are in so much pain. I, I, I did that. I cried like a baby because I was in so much pain. Amen. But let me tell you something. I heard a voice. And he spoke to me. And he said, get up out of that bed and read your Bible. <laughs> in other words, in other words, why are you sitting here moaning and groaning? Why are you sitting here having a pity party? Get up out of that bed and read your Bible. And I'm telling you, that scared me so much. I ran to the door, thought somebody was out there messing with me. <laughs> I, 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 it really, it really, it really, it really hit me hard. Amen. And I ran, and I didn't, I didn't see the one out there. I didn't see anyone outside the door. Amen. And as I was going to go back to my bed, lay back down, I quickly dumped back around because I thought if, if they see me go back to my bed, they will come, they will sneak back in there again and holler again. But as I was going back to my bed, I, I ran back over to the window, looked out the window, thought I might catch someone trying to mess with me. But friend, there was no one there. The only one there was God. And he was speaking to me just as plain as I'm talking to you right now. Your answers is not outside the door. Your answers is obeying what he said. He said to get up and to read the Bible. And I got up began to read the Bible and that's when the word began to come alive in my heart through my obedience. The word began to come alive and I began to experience, I began to experience the power of God. I began to experience the power of God right there in my house. I didn't have to go to the doctor. I didn't have to go to the hospital. I didn't, I didn't have money to go even if I wanted to go. I didn't even have insurance to go if I wanted to go. Amen. And that let me know that my healing wasn't in the insurance. My healing wasn't in the money. My healing was in my belief in the word of God. And the same as it was with me, so it is with you. Your healing is not in how much money you got or don't have. Your money is not in how much insurance you have or don't have. Your healing is all involved in what you believe in your heart concerning divine health and healing in the Bible or in the word of God. If thou canst believe, the Bible said Mark chapter 9, verse 23, all things are possible to him that believe. And I believe that your healing is possible. I believe that your healing is possible. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. Otherwise, I would not be preaching. I would not be teaching. I would not be talking about this right now. If I had any doubt in my heart concerning what I'm sharing with you.
But I believe that we serve a God that not only wants you saved, but he wants you healed also. He wants you healed also. Amen. And so with that being said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take you to another scripture in the book of Mark. You probably know where I'm going. Book of Mark chapter 5. Now this time we're going to start at verse number 23. Mark chapter 5. Chapter. Chapter 5, verse number 22. Verse number 22. Mark 5, verse 22. And behold, there came, and behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, Knows how, knows how Jairus came? When he saw him, he came and fell at his feet. Amen. Fell at his feet. In other words, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. Verse number 23, And we saw him greatly, saying, My little daughter lied at the point of death. Now he's so concerned about his daughter. But you notice, he's not releasing no doubt at all, even though his daughter is at the point of death. He is not doubting anything. He's not, he's not, uh, 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 uh disputing anything. He's not uh, complaining about anything. All the thing he's asking Jesus, he's just asking him straight out, come, my little daughter, lie at the point of death. Amen. And I pray thee, come and lay thy hands upon her that she may be healed and she shall live. Amen. Notice the man did not doubt God at all, did not doubt the Lord at all. Amen. Now notice what it said in verse number 24, because verse number 24, take you all Take us off on a, on a, on a little, on, on another on another journey because now we we about to see in verse number twenty five about we about to see a woman with an issue of blood twelve years is going to come out and stop Jesus right in his tracks Amen and we're going to we're going to see that he did not allow this interruption to cause Jairus faith to be hindered. He didn't even allow him to open his mouth when it was time to move on forward. Amen. Even when the servant came to him and said, why trouble out the master? Your daughter is now dead. Jesus did not allow Jairus to say anything. He spoke up first. Amen. Uh, and so we're going to see the power of faith, the power of believing. Amen. So he said, verse number 24, and Jesus, and Jesus went with them, with him, much people follow him and throw up him. Verse 25, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. See, this woman, she was in the condition not for a week, not for a month, but for 12 years. Amen. Now, J. Iris' daughter just, just took sick and began to die. But this woman was in this condition for 12 years. And so when this woman heard about Jesus passing by, even though he was on, a, he was on an emergency call, <laughs> he was on an emergency, emergency call for Jairus, his daughter was at the point of death. But how do you know that this woman with issue blood then had it 12 years? Amen. How much, how much longer was her life going to last beyond that point? So she, her life could have been in jeopardy right there herself. 12 years of a issue of blood situation. Her life was probably in jeopardy right there itself. But when she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, she began rehearsing herself. She began to prophesy to herself. She began rehearsing in her mind. I know if I may touch the hymn of his garment, I shall be whole. She began to rehearse it over and over and over and over. And all of a sudden, she began to rehearse it over and over in her mind and in her heart. Then all of a sudden, she began to release it out of her mouth. In other words, she gave life to what she was believing for. 
She opened up her heart and she spoke what she desired to receive from the Lord. So many times we, we, we say what we, we, we don't even take time to think about how we're going to approach God and, and if I'm going to approach him the right way um, or, 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 or is there a certain way that I need to approach him concerning this issue. Amen. But this woman, she just meditated in her heart. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Because I heard so much talk about this man. And I know if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. And he's about to pass by my house. And if I lay here, I'm surely going to die. But if I get up, I might die and I might not die. But if I can just get to that man, just touch his garment. Can you imagine her thinking like this? Amen. And now Jairus, he's walking beside Jesus, so happy that Jesus is walking with him toward his house. And now here comes this woman coming out of the house. And she see the crowd, and she pressed through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment. And it touched him so that touch was so powerful that it just like just like a vote of lightning just come down. The power so strong, like vocal lightning, pow, hit this woman, knocked her down to the ground, and Jesus was, was made to stand still right in his tracks. And J.R. said, Master, what, what are you waiting on? Come on, my daughter, my daughter. And he didn't say nothing. J.R. did not say one word. Amen. He could have, but he didn't. Because he didn't want to allow any doubt to enter into his heart. His heart has already spoken the word of faith concerning his daughter. Come and lay thy hand upon her that she may be healed that she shall live. He had already released his faith concerning his daughter. But now here come this woman, touched his garment and stopped him in his track and he turns around to see this that woman had done this thing. And he began to talk to her. And she began to tell him everything that she had been through. And he looked at her and said, daughter, thy faith. He didn't say, he did not say, your issue of blood is healed. No, he probably could have said that. But he said, no, thy faith has made you whole. Thy faith has made you whole. Because if you didn't have faith, you never would have came out here. If you had to come out here, you'd probably lay there and die. But because you had faith, you came and you touched my garment because that's what you rehearsed in your heart and you put action. Not only did you put action, you, you spoke it out of your mouth exactly what you wanted to receive. And then you put action to it. You got up and did something about it. You had active faith. Amen. And so she came and touched and, 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 the, but, and Jesus at this time, the desertorian soldier came and said, why trouble the master any further? Behold, your daughter is now dead. Jesus looked at Jairus and said, only believe. <laughs> he would not let him say anything, any doubt, any word of doubt. He would not let anything come out of his mouth. Notice what he says right here. Notice what he says right here. We, we, in, we, in, Mark, we in Mark chapter 5. <coughs> Amen. We're in Mark chapter 5. Now look at verse number 35. Verse number 35. While he yet spake, there coming from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master any further? Amen. Look, at, look what he said in verse number 36. See, he didn't give Jairus a chance to say anything. And, and as soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not what? Afraid. In other words, don't allow fear to enter your heart. Don't allow fear or doubt to enter your heart. Keep your faith active. Keep your faith active. Amen. He said, only believe. Only believe. Amen. And he, and he suffered no man to, to follow him, say Peter, James, and John, and the, the brother of James, and he cometh to the house 
of the ruler of the synagogue and see the multitude, the tumult, and them that, that weep and wail greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The dancer is not dead, but sleep. And they and the dancer is not dead. The dancer is not dead, but sleep. And they laugh him to scorn. Because they said, who is who, who, this cuckoo? Who is this? I've seen, this, I've seen dead people before. Now, who, why are you coming here making fun of this man's daughter? Why are they coming here making, making uh, uh, this, this type of accusation against his daughter? I've seen dead people. Amen. Can you imagine them talking like that? I can. Amen. I can. But Jesus, he put all of those doubters out of the house. Notice, he only took those in the house that were still in faith. He only took those with him that was in faith. He didn't allow any doubt to follow him. Glory to God. Doubt will stop you from receiving the promise of God. Faith will bring you to a place where you have activity working on your behalf. Why? Because you are walking by faith and not by sight. Your faith will work for you if you will work it. Amen. So it says right here, it says right here in verse number, verse number of 40, he said, and they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he take it the father and the mother and of the and of, he take the father and the mother of the dancer and, and them that were with him and entered in where the dancer was laying. And he took the dancer by the hand, verse number 41, and he took the dancer by the hand and said unto her, Atilia Kamai, which is being interpreted, dancer, I say unto thee, arise. And the Bible said, verse number 42 said, and straightway the dancer arose and, and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with great um, astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it. And commanded that something be, should be given her to eat. Amen. When God wants to move on your behalf, he wants to move on faith. He's not going to move when you are doubting. Remember what he said in Mark chapter 11, verse number 23, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which you are saying shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. God knows how to bring you to that place where you can receive his promise activated in your life and in your heart, but you have to be the one to walk in the faith of God. You cannot receive the promise with a heart full of doubt. But when you're walking by faith, the promise of God are made sure. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing right now upon every heart and I'm sounding my voice that are believing you right now, Father. Those that have set their heart on you for healing, Father, in the name of Jesus, let their faith begin to be active right now. In the name of Jesus, just like the centurion, Amen, God, and just like the, just like the, 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 the Roman soldier, Jairus, God, let the people' faith become active, just like the one with the issue of blood. Let them begin to rehearse in their hearts what they believe in, what they, what they expected. Then, Father, then let them speak it out of their mouth in faith. Then, Lord, let your word be confirmed with signs follow, according to Mark chapter eleven, verse twenty. Chapter 16, verse 20. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you that your word will not fall to the ground, but it will accomplish that which pleases you. And may your name be forever glorified, Father, because we're walking by faith and not by sight. I release that anointing now. Father, let your healing anointing begin to rest upon those right now that are releasing their faith. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke diabetes. I rebuke lung disease. I rebuke blood disease. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke uh, 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 asthma. I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Colon cancer, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Prostate cancer, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God. And I believe that it's done. I believe that it's done. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Someone you did, you, 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 you viewing this, you, 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 you viewing this message, and you just had a bad report from the doctor. Talking about your colon. Is infected. And you think that you have cancer. But they're prepared to run more tests. I want you to know right now. That God is touching you. Right now, there's an anointing beginning to rest upon you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. The anointing of God begin to follow you right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Colin, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. I thank you for it, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to go ahead and receive our evening offering. Amen. We're going to receive our evening offering. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Amen. Those that want to sow a seed today, you can go to my website, labrookingministries.com. Amen. Go to my website, labrookingministries.com. Or you can go to uh, use your, your cash app. Amen. Use your cash app. And put my name, Larry Birkins, B-I-R-G-A-N-S, L-A-R-O-Y, B-I-R-G-A-N-S. Put that dollar sign in front of it, amen, in the cash app, and you will find that my picture will appear, amen, right there on the cash app, amen. Sow your seed in faith. Believe God for your breakthrough. I'm in agreement with you. God's word will not return void, but it will accomplish that what pleases him, amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we prepare to give our tithes and our offering, glory to God. And those that want to sow through by sending in a check, you can send it to Larry Bergen Ministries or New Life in Christ Jesus Church. Amen. And make and you can send it to P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. That's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. One more time. That's P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 958410. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. That as we give, that it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall be given to our bosom. I bless your people. I bless the seed that they are sowing right now, Father. I thank you, Father, that your, your word will not return void. You said you will bless us in the city. You will bless us in the field. You will bless us going out. You will bless us coming in. God, you even said you will cause the devourer to, to, to loose, to be loose in Jesus' name. Glory to God. We thank you, Father. We thank you that you rebuke the devourer on our part. We give you we give you glory for, for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, those of you that need you, you, you never, you never ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart. Right now, I'm gonna give you that opportunity. If you never ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart, right now, I'm gonna give you that opportunity. Amen. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit, and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, and that you died for my sin. Because I believe this and confess with my mouth today, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you're here today, you need special prayer. I'll pray for you right now. Anyone need prayer today? No? Okay. 
Let's pray for those that are with us by the internet. Father, we pray for those that are with us by the internet right now. In the name of Jesus, we release our faith. And we agree with them, Father, for that supernatural touch. That as they come into faith right now, Father, that you're going to come upon them like hot liquid oil. Resting upon them with healing. I bless your people right now in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. We thank God for you. Don't forget to join us again. Join us again on this Tuesday night. Amen. Where the word of God will come alive just for you. We love you. We thank God for you. Until then, be blessed. We love you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.